five this is module five introduction to logic let me share with you this powerpoint presentation as we go deeper into the concept of logic logic is the science of correct reasoning the use of logic lawyers and judges uh, communicate effectively construct valid arguments and analyze legal con contracts makes or and make decision by logic also programmers uses logic in their design in how they design computer software in electrical engineering logic is used in design circuits for smartphones and mathematicians use logic to solve problems and prove theory just some historical background for uh, the development of logic socrates is known as a philosopher and the father of critical thinking Gottfried uh, Wilhelm Leibniz actually combined logic and math and can create symbolic language that can solve scientific problems. Augustus de Morgan viewed math as an abstract study of symbols, while George Boole is the father of symbolic logic. Charles Ludwig Dodson, known as Louis Carroll, is uh, the one who developed the game of logic and symbolic logic. So learning outcomes. Our learning outcomes for this chapter actually is to analyze information and the relationship between statements, construct the truth table to evaluate whether a given statement is a tautology or not. In everyday language, we have different kinds of statements. Uh, questions such as, do we have a test today? Commands such as close the door or opinions like math is a useful subject or and we have this declarative statements like CPU is an educational institution statements actually are declarative sentence this is that is either true or false but not both which means that it could be readily evaluated whether the statement being pronounced is true or false so let us try this one determine whether each sentence is a declarative statement or not a Boracay island is in the province of ililo this is a declarative sentence or declarative statements since this sentence could be evaluated whether it's true or false and this statement is false However, letter B, how are you, is not a declarative statement because it could not be evaluated. While C and D are both declarative sentences because we could evaluate it as true or false. For instance, in statement D, x plus 1 is equal to 5 when x is equal to 5 is a declarative sentence since we could evaluate it readily whether it's true or false. This statement, again, is also false because when x is equal to 5, then 5 plus 1 is not equal to 5. Simple statement and compound statement. Simple statement is a statement that conveys a single idea. For example, 2 is an even number and 2 is a prime number. These two separate statements are simple statements because they convey just a single idea. On the other hand, compound statements conveys multiple ideas. For instance, two is an even or prime number is a compound statement because it has two uh, ideas, that is, two is even number and two is a prime number. Another statement that uh, is a compound statement is, I will study my lesson in GMAT or I will fail in this subject. The two ideas present uh, are the following. I will study my lesson in GE math and I will fail in these subjects. These are the two single ideas present in this example of a compound statement. So now, let P and Q be two simple statements. Therefore, we could combine these two simple statements into a compound statement and later on we could verify this statement whether the statement holds true or not. The first connector that we could use to, co to combine simple statement is the connector OR. With this symbol, red P or Q, with this symbol in compound statement. 
this type of compound statement is called the disjunction. Another connector we could use is end with this symbol, red P and Q. And this is called the conjunction. Another connective is the if and then, symbolized by this arrow, red if P then Q, which is labeled as a conditional compound statement. Another one is the if and only if, designed uh, with a symbol, uh, double uh, this symbol, and it is read if and only if. So P, if and only if, Q, and this is called biconditional. The last one actually, connect, the last connector is the negation or the not, which this symbol, and read as not P, and not Q, which is called the negation of the statement. So now let's consider this example. Let P be equal to Huxle Ridge depicts a true story, and Q, the Huxle Ridge is a beautiful movie. Write the following in the following compound statements. So let's just take this example. This is P or Q. If we write this in compound statements in sentences, we could say Hacksaw Ridge depicts a true story or Hacksaw Ridge is a beautiful movie. In letter B, this is P and Q. We could read this in complete sentences substituting the uh, real values for P and Q. We could read Hacksaw Ridge depicts a true story and Hacksaw Bridge or Ridge, rather, is a beautiful movie. Last, let's take this example, letter C. This is a P then Q. So, Hacksaw Ridge depicts a true story, then, Hacks, rather, if Hacksaw Ridge depicts a true story, then Hacksaw Ridge is a beautiful movie. So now, let's move onwards. You could do the remaining uh, exercises. <clears throat> Consider the following statement. It is raining, the streets are flooded, there is heavy traffic. Translate the following in symbolic form. So let me use annotation to, uh, to have the solution for this one. It says it is raining and the streets are flooded. So we could say that P, it is raining and are, or rather, Q, the streets are flooded. In letter B, the streets are flooded or there is heavy traffic. So the streets are flooded, that's Q, or the symbol for or, there is heavy traffic, R. In letter C, it is not raining, then there is no heavy traffic. So, if it is not raining, the negation of P, so the negation of P, it is not raining, then, the arrow, there is no heavy traffic. The negation of R, there is no heavy traffic. So, this is how we answer this or we translate these statements compound states, statements into symbolic form. Now let's move onwards. <clears throat> Another example, P, Q, and R represents the following. P, you get a promotion. Q, you complete the training. And R, you will receive a bonus. Write P and Q, then R as an English sentence. So we could do that. First, P. You get, this is a if and then statement. So if, if, that starts with if. If you get the promotion, P, and you complete the training, Q, then R, you will receive a bonus. That is the English sentence equivalent of this symbolic form. Now, 
right if you do not complete the training then you will not get a promotion and you will not receive a bonus in symbolic form let's try that one if you do not complete the training that is not q since q you complete the training then if you do not complete the training is not q then you will not get promotion then you will not get promotion that's not p not get promotion and you will not receive a bonus that's not r closed in parentheses because this entire statement is the uh what do you call this the representation of this statement in symbolic form okay so now <clears throat> This statement, on the other hand, is a symbolic form of this English statement. If you get a promotion and you complete a training, then you will receive a bonus. And again, this is the solution for the previous one we've been talking about. If you do not complete the training, then you will not get promotion and you will receive, not receive a bonus. So now, for example, let's try this. Uh, examples for our practice today <clears throat> p today is friday q it is raining r i am going to a movie s i am not going to the basketball game let's try answering a today is friday and it is raining we are asked to write the following and compounds compound statements in symbolic form so we say today is friday that's p and it is raining that's q so that's the answer for a let's try b it is not raining so it's not q not raining and i am going to the movie you write the symbol and and going to the movie r now let's try c i am going to the basketball game that's s or I am going to the movie. So you write the symbol or going to the movie R. So that is the equivalent of this statement C. How about statement D? It is raining. It is raining. So that's Q. Then uh, if it is raining, then I'm not going to the basketball game. Then not going to the basketball game so these are the answers for a b c and d so we could ha uh, we could use this uh, given uh, statements to have a uh, what do you call this a practice for our own uh, learning now let's talk about truth table we have this truth table P, Q, P and Q, P or Q, P then Q, P and if and only if Q, and not P. Okay? So now, the question is, or rather, how to build a truth table. So, this is the exact uh, part of the truth table. Uh, first, you, you write the first element and the second or rather the first term and the second term and later on i would uh, give you a much better glimpse of how to write down a, a good truth table but this time let's just evaluate this uh, truth table as our uh, basis for further evaluation of uh, compound statements so if p is true and q is true then the statement P or Q is true. So remember, the statement P or Q is only false when both P and Q are false. On the other hand, the statement P and Q is only true when both P and Q are true. The rest, it's always false. The statement, if P then Q, 
it is only false when P is true but F is false and true otherwise. Now, the statement P if and only if Q is only true if both P and Q are true or both P and Q are false. And lastly, the not P is just actually the uh, negation of the truth value of P. So if P is true, then not P is false. If P is false, then not P is true. So how do we examine the truth value of the statement? So to examine the truth value of the statement, we just examine the value of the first statement and the value of the second statement and uh, evaluate the combination or the conjunction being used uh, uh, for the uh, two statements. For instance, if P is true and Q is false, then because the conjunction is end, we could say that this entire statement is false since a statement joined by a conjunction end would only be true if both P and Q are true. Let's try the, this one for practice. <clears throat> negative 5 is less than negative 3 or negative 3 is less than negative 5. We say that the first statement of this compound statement, negative 5 is less than negative 3, is true. However, the second statement is false. But since this is joined by a statement or, then we could say that the first statement is true, the second statement is false, but this compound statement is true. Because according to the truth table, the first statement is true, the second statement is false, Still, if joined by a conjunction or, first statement is true, second statement is false, joined with a con conjunction or, then the statement is true. Another example, if negative 5 is greater than negative 3, then negative 3 is greater than negative 5. We could say that the first statement is false because negative 5 is not greater than negative 3. That is false. And the second statement is true. So since this is false and this is true, we check again the truth table. We have the conjunction end. The first statement is false. The second statement is true. Then we could say that the entire statement is true. So therefore, this statement, if negative 5 is greater than negative 3, then negative 3 is greater than negative 5 is true. That is how conditional statement works. Okay? These are other forms of how we could say if and then. So P implies Q. If P comma Q, it's still if and then. If, if the statement says P is sufficient for Q, it's still P then Q. Okay? When we say Q if P, it's still P then Q. If we say Q whenever P, it's still P then Q. So we must be comfort, uh, rather comfortable in knowing these kinds of vocabulary in order to recognize P then Q statements. So let's check our progress. If you have, uh, let's, uh, the following statements are conditional statements in different forms. For each statement, identify the statement P and Q of the statement, then express each given statement as a conditional form, if P then Q. So if you have current passwords, then you can log into the network. So we could say that this is our first statement. Let's label that as P. And this is our second statement. We label this as Q. So we can say that this is P then Q. Right? In the second statement, GE math is easy only if it is enjoyable. So we could say that this is an if and then statement, but this is also P then Q if our P is this one. 
And this is our Q. So you could practice on other examples as well. Analyzing arguments. So logical arguments is an argument that is said to be valid if the fact that all the premises are true forces the conclusion to be true. An argument that is not valid is invalid. It is called a fallacy. So, which means that when we talk about logical argument, it is said, now, the question is, is the following statement valid? Is the following statement or argument valid? All amusement parks have thrill rides. Great America is an amusement park. Great America has thrill rides. In order for us to evaluate if this statement is valid, we must construct a truth table. So constructing a truth table is as follows. First, we must assign a letter to represent each component statement in the argument. Second, express each premise and conclusion symbolically. Third, from the symbolic statement of the entire argument, write the conjunction of all the premise as the intercedent of a conditional statement, then the conclusion of the argument as the consequence. And lastly, complete the truth table for the conditional statement formed in part three above. If it is a tautology, always true, then the argument is valid. Otherwise, it is invalid. Let's try this simple argument for uh, our lesson. If the floor is dirty, then I must map it. The floor is dirty, I must map it. So we have this statement. Let P be the floor is dirty and let Q, I must map it. So if we transform this into its mathematical equivalence using this representation, we get if P, then Q, and P, then Q. The floor is dirty, then I must map it. And since the floor is dirty, then I must map it. This is a, as we read it in the English language. Now, we must construct a truth table to understand whether this statement is indeed a tautology in which means in which case all uh, possible arguments is always true so how do we do that let me share with you this blank document <clears throat> Let's try this in uh, much better in Word. Okay. Okay, this one. Let me use this one, uh, this blank. Uh, document as our basis for understanding or doing the truth table of this mathematical statement. First, we must insert or create a table. How many columns do we say? Uh, first, let's have two columns for the uh, compound statements, P, Q, then P, then Q, then P, then Q, and P, and the last statement. So this is the column. The first column is about P. The second column is Q. The third column is this statement. Or rather, the third column, the third column is, let's use small letters. Oh, let's use small letters. P. Oh, it's not. Anyways. Q. The next column is P, 
then Q. That represents the first sentence. Okay? Again, this statement is the floor is dirty, I must mop, then I must mop. Okay? The floor is dirty, then I must mop. So that's P, then Q. Next, the next column is the conjunction of the first statement and the second statement, which says, If the floor is dirty, then I must mop and the floor is dirty. That is the second statement. And the last one is the mathematical representation of the entire statement. Now, how do we make a truth table? First, let's assign values. Let's assume the first statement, three, P is true. In the second statement, it is true. Second state, third statement, it's false. And the last statement, it's false. Q then is true, false, true, false. To get the maximum combination for, uh, or to get all the combination of the value for P and Q. So when P is true and Q is true, the statement P then Q is true, as we have learned before. When the P is true and Q is false, the statement P and Q, P then Q is false, as we, as we have learned before. When P is false and Q is true, P then Q is true. And when both are false, P then Q is still true true as we have learned before in the truth table of P then Q. Now, since P then Q is true and P is also true, true and true, then we could say this statement is true. This statement, P then Q is false. And P is true. So this is false. Now, in this statement, P, P then Q is true, but P is false. So this is false. And lastly, in this statement, P then Q is true, but P is false. So still false. Now, we have the final statement being evaluated. P then Q and P is true, but and Q is also true. So this is true. P then Q is false and Q is false. This is true because this entire statement is false and this entire statement is also false. If P then Q is true, then, or if rather T is true, or my mistake, if P then Q and P is false, and Q is true, then this statement is still true, as we have learned in the previous lesson. And since P then Q and P is false, and Q is false, this still is true. Henceforth, this statement is a tautology because it's true in any combination of P and Q. Whatever the truth value of P and the truth value of Q, the entire statement is still true. So this is a tautology. And that is how you build